Hello and welcome to Deadline Northeast, a program that gives you an overview of the developments in India's Northeast region. I'm your host, Skyrim Zamek, and here are the top stories of today's program. Religious places, malls, restaurants open with caution in Northeast states. Nagaland gears up to open businesses as Unlock One begins. And Northeast region observes World Environment Day. Religious places, shopping malls, restaurants and hotels across the country have opened up after 75 days of lockdown. The government has issued a new set to social distancing rules and no large gathering in the wake of coronavirus pandemic, a report. Malls, restaurants and religious places across the northeast states reopened from June 8 after the center announced to unlock 1.0 but the government has issued strict restrictions. The new guideline includes measures like staggering visitors to malls and no touching of religious idols at religious places. In Assam, all religious places reopened from June 8 and according to the rules issued by the Assam State Disaster Management Authority, gathering of a maximum of 20 people per hour is allowed. I don't have the Assam government has laid strict guidelines to ensure social distancing and no large gathering. No touching of idols, no prasad and no holy water would be allowed in the religious places. Masks are mandatory for all the devotees. मंदिर जैसे खुलने से पहले हमने अपने मंदिर को मतलब जैसे सैनिटाइज पूरे तरीके से किया हुआ है और ऐसे भी जैसे जो भक्त लोग जो पहले के तरह तो भीड़ होगी नहीं मंदिरों में लेकिन फिर भी जो जैसे जैसे करके भक्त लोग आते रहेंगे एक एक करके उनको अंदर एंटर करने देंगे वो भी सैनिटाइज करने के बाद में और सोशल डिस्टेंसिंग का हम लोग पूरा पालन करेंगे और जैसे गवर्नमेंट की गाइडलाइंस है उसी को फॉलो करके हम आगे अपने मंदिर को जैसे यहां शनि महाराज के मंदिर को खोलने की व्यवस्था हमने कर रखी है the session court is open only for emergency cases. The remaining high courts will be opened only after the order of the Chief Justice. Although the center has allowed the reopening of religious places of worship, but Christian majority states like Meghalaya, Mizoram and Nagaland will remain closed till further orders are issued. In Meghalaya, the state government has decided to retract the earlier decision to open up places of worship from the June 14 following a consultative meeting with all religious heads based in the state. After discussing with everybody and getting everybody's comments and suggestions, majority of the church leaders, the temples uh, and the mosques and other religious organizations, most of them felt uh, that uh, we should postpone or revisit this decision of opening uh, the places of worship on the 14th. Also keeping in mind that uh, the state has always maintained that health will be a priority and keeping in mind that we are still having a number of people who are stranded outside the state uh, who are coming back. Uh, keeping all these factors in mind, uh, we felt that uh, at this point in time, we need to revisit the decision. And accordingly, based on the majority view, we have decided that uh, we will not be opening up places of worship till the end of this month. Meghalaya government eased the restrictions amid Unlock 1.0 and allowed the reopening of all shops, excluding beauty parlors and barber shops in the state. Now we just have to live with the situation and uh, maintain and take all the safety measures and uh, keeping in mind the social distancing. The city came to life with vehicular movement and shops opening their shutters. Although, the state government has allowed only 50% of vehicles to ply in odd and even numbers. The roads were filled with vehicles. We take care of on our own, forget about government policies, but then I think each individual is responsible for their own health. Whereas in Sikkim, most of the religious places remain shut. While Sikkim is one of the least affected states in the country, it has decided to take a cautious approach. 
The interstate movement has been allowed to bring back stranded Sikkimese people. Coronavirus has gripped the whole nation, taking the lives of millions around the globe, but it has failed to defeat the invincible spirit of COVID-19 warriors. To appreciate the frontline warriors, artists in Guwahati painted the walls with coronavirus-themed artworks. Have a look. They say a picture is worth a thousand words. Citizens around the world are coming up with numerous creative ideas to thank the frontline warriors. In line with that, these artists from Guwahati Friends Club painted the walls of fancy bazaar with colorful murals to express their gratitude towards Corona Warrior and also to spread awareness on COVID-19. Ever since the nationwide lockdown, doctors, nurses, police personnel and many other frontline workers are working vigorously day and night to combat deadly coronavirus. हम लोग ये पेंटिंग के थ्रू मतलब लोगों को जागरूक कर रहे हैं कि कैसे सोशल डिस्टेंसिंग मेंटेन करना है क्या करना है और हम लोग थैंक्स भी दे रहे हैं सभी वॉरियर्स को जो भी हमने इस कोरोना में पार्टिसिपेट किए हैं उन लोग को हम लोग हेल्प जो कर रहे हैं उनको धन्यवाद दे रहे हैं और यहाँ पर एक्चुअल में बेसिक हम लोग का ये था कि यहाँ पर थोड़ा सा गंदगी होती थी उसको भी हम लोग कवर अप कर सकें रोक सकें इसीलिए हम लोगों ने ये किया है the art depicts a medic surrounded by a microscopic image of coronavirus and protecting people with text reading jaan hai to jahan hai if there is life there is a world characters of marvel bowing down to doctors and many more the murals painting also detail the use of hand sanitizer and how to maintain personal hygiene to protect oneself from the pandemic isse kya hai ki bahut se log jo पढ़े लिखे नहीं है वो भी इसको देख के समझ जाते हैं छवि को देख के लोग समझ में आता है उनको पिक्चर को देख के हमें क्या करना है किस तरीके से डिस्टेंस मेंटेन करना है हाथ धोना है वगैरह वगैरह जिस तरह की आवश्यकता है उस तरह का मैसेज हम लोगों ने इस वॉल पेंटिंग के द्वारा दिया है अकॉर्डिंग टू रिपोर्ट असम रिकॉर्डेड ट्वेल्व न्यू कोविड नाइन्टीन केसेज ऑन जून एट सेवन फ्रॉम नागांव एंड फाइव फ्रॉम बारापाटा The total number of COVID-19 cases surged to 2,693, while 636 patients have recovered so far. The numbers of cases in the state has recorded a steep increase since the interstate movement began on May 4th. The United Nations has designated the 5th June as World Environment Day. Every year since 1974 it has been celebrated to help draw attention to benefits that nature gives to humanity. Let's have a look how the northeast region observed the World Environment Day. Along with the rest of the country, the northeast region too observed the World Environment Day amidst COVID-19. This year's theme of the World Environment Day is biodiversity, a concern that is both urgent and existential. In Shillong, the Border Security Force Meghalaya Frontier or BSFM organized a massive plantation drive. Around 15,000 tree saplings were planted by the Border Security Forces. Tree sapling was also planted across all the border outposts or BOPs along the Indian Bangladesh border. The day was also observed in all the 11 district headquarters in the state. हम न केवल ये पेड़ लगा रहे हैं बल्कि हम ये इंश्योर भी करते हैं कि इसमें से अधिकतम जो पेड़ हैं वो सरवाइव करें और ये लंबे समय तक जो है हमको अपनी सेवाएं प्रदान करें इसके लिए हम लोगों ने हर घर में जिम्मेवारी दी है कि इन पेड़ों को न केवल लगाएं बल्कि उनकी एक नैतिक जिम्मेदारी बनेगी कि इनको समय पर इनकी जो है गुड़ाई करें इन पर पानी दें ताकि ये जो है उनको नुकसान न हो और ये दो तीन साल बाद अपने आप ही ग्रोन इनकी ग्रोथ जो है बढ़ जाएगी वेरस इन त्रिपुरा चीफ मिनिस्टर बिप्लब कुमार देव अलॉन्ग विद टॉप ऑफिशियल ऑफ द स्टेट टू पार्ट इन प्लांटेशन ड्राइव एट द सिविल सेक्रेटेरियट कॉम्प्लेक्स More than 76% of its geographical area is under forest cover in Tripura. Speaking on the occasion, Chief Minister Deep said that all citizens must keep the environment pollution free so that all have access to pure oxygen and only way to do is by planting more trees. 
we have to take care of environment then only the environment will take care of us today the problems which we are seeing are because of the fact that we have not been able to look at the environment holistically because the nature nature is the prime thing and we have a lot of learning in nature nature uh, we have to live with nature we have to nurture the nature and we have to uh, protect the nature in order to save ourselves also in manipur a 20 minute documentary titled protected areas of manipur the wilderness unexplored produced by the state forest department was released during the world environment day going a step ahead in its pursuit to ensure a healthy environment and to spread the importance of forest cover in maintaining ecological balance igar north in kohima observed a mass plantation drive on the occasion of world environment day Residents actively participated in the event along with troops and families. As part of the novel initiative, over 10,000 saplings of various varieties were planted across Nagaland. The Assam Rifles in Kohima, Kohima Battalion, Kifre, Twinsang, Zohibota, Gaspani, Mokokchong and Samotor Battalion planted tree saplings within Kohima military garrison and its surroundings. Similarly, The day was also observed in Arunachal Pradesh, Assam and Sikkim. This year's host for the World Environment Day were Germany and Colombia. Let us now take a look at some of the events that made news in the Northeast recently. Tripura witnessed its first COVID-19 death on June 5. According to reports, the 42-year-old deceased was from Chachu Bazar, West Tripura district, suffered a stroke and had a medical condition of hypertension. Tripura government has announced to pay a compensation of 10 lakh rupees to the family of the deceased. As of June 10, the total tally of coronavirus positive cases in the state had crossed 800 mark. To enhance the economic growth of Manipur through agriculture and horticulture, Manipur Chief Minister N Biren Singh recently inaugurated the Plant Health Clinic at the Directorate of Horticulture and Soil Conservation in Imphal. During the function a mobile soil testing laboratory van was also launched speaking at the function Singh said that his government has decided to give more emphasis on agriculture and horticulture sectors in this hour of covid-19 pandemic Around 100 villages from Miram village came together and constructed a quarantine center for returnees The quarantine center includes 10 rooms and 10 separate convenient rooms and it was built in a day. The quarantine center is constructed for the people of the village who may travel to Itanagar, Dibrugar, Guwahati and Shillong in case of emergencies. A loan camp was recently organized under Atmanirbhar Bharat Abhiyan for micro, small and medium enterprises at Rabindra Bhavan campus in Agartala to revive the state economy from COVID-19 lockdown. The camp was attended by hundreds of budding entrepreneurs. Tripura Chief Minister Biblab Kumar Deb along with other officials inaugurated the loan camp by lighting the lamp and vowed to rescue the struggling MSMEs and encourage job creators. Tripura government also distributed and sanctioned loans among stakeholders with a 20% upgradation loan to those MSMEs owners who could not run their factories during the last 3 months due to the lockdown. Kohima police in collaboration with Green Team Kohima has set up food operated hand washing kiosks at 15 different locations including all the police stations within Kohima town. This initiative was undertaken to ensure the safety and personal hygiene of the police personnel on duty as well as the general public amidst the COVID-19 pandemic. A massive fire engulfed a natural gas producing well of Oil Indian Limited in Assam's Tinsukia district which had blown out 14 days back. 1600 families in the vicinity have been evacuated to relief camps. According to reports the incident happened when a team of 3 experts from a Singapore firm had reached the site to unplug the well. Moving on to Nagaland, Nagaland is all set to reopen its businesses as the government announced new guidelines for Unlock 1.0. As the state has witnessed a recent rise in COVID-19 cases, places of worship and hotels will remain shut. 
The district task force has also imposed restrictions on vehicular movement in Dimapur district. We have a report. As the centre has issued a standard operating procedure for reopening malls, restaurants and businesses, Nagalin is gradually opening after two months of lockdown. In the state's commercial hub, Dimapur, where guidelines have been issued to reduce shop timings by two hours. People were seen in queue with marks to pay their bill in shopping malls. As the number of coronavirus patients increases in the state, Nagaland will continue to be under lockdown until further notice, with very little relaxation being introduced. It is now mandatory to wear masks as people of Nagaland are learning to live with virus. Hospitality services such as hotels have been allowed to operate. However, only those serving stranded persons, police personnel, government officials and healthcare workers will be allowed to function. The business may not be the same, it will take time to pick up, but we have to take precautionary measures like uh, keeping hand sanitizers at the entrance of the restaurant maintaining social distance with the arrangement of the uh, inside the restaurant, mm. sitting arrangement inside the restaurant, yeah. disinfecting the area after the customer, after the guests leave the table, mm. and using face masks. Although the centre has allowed the reopening of religious establishment in keeping with the SPOs, Places of worship in Christian majority state will remain closed till further orders are issued by the state government. As on 9th June, five more new cases of COVID-19 positive reported in Nagaland, taking the total number of confirmed positive cases in the state to 127, out of which 119 are active cases and eight patients have recovered. In this pandemic, the restaurants the owners of the restaurants and the malls, they are the worst sufferers. So it's a good thing that the government has passed the order for them to be reopened. Spokesperson for COVID-19 and Minister of Planning and Coordination, Land Revenue and Parliamentary Affairs, Naibi Kronu, said that the state government has decided to enlist private laboratories to conduct COVID-19 tests. The Northeast region has tremendous scope for floriculture due to its diverse geoclimatic conditions and floral biodiversity. The flower business in the region has witnessed great loss due to the prolonged COVID-19 lockdown. In today's episode, let's meet a local florist from Senapati district of Manipur and find out how she's coping with the pandemic. With the prevailing situations of nationwide lockdown, the flower business has been disrupted across the country. Many local florists are experiencing the pinch of lockdown. So is Roby, a local florist who runs a nursery at Mayakhang village Kangpopi in Senapati district of Manipur. With the prevailing situations of nationwide lockdown, the proprietor of SP Nursery Roby is seeking the help of government to provide necessary assistance for their livelihood. I shall not yam in this level and do a market to cram upon the lapoquido. A queen is meant to hold a day, quay, and you pull the go. Yam canava nagling, one nak pajaga da go. Do you the mutton? Do you and Bushwe? Do she walk at flower she did, fresh cutting she did. A masso, you and Bayadre, Manga with the Kulang to Manga, Paisa to Manga, Loin Manga, but no me couldn't do Chabat of Nina. Roby is planting varieties of cut flowers including gladiolus, carnation, succulents, evergreens and other seasonal flowers. Usually carnation flower matures and is ready for sale in March or early April. However, the outbreak of COVID-19 and subsequent imposition of nationwide lockdown for containing the pandemic in early March has severely affected her sales. The region has great potential in the dry flower sector too. Here, Robbie is drying status flowers. 
These flowers are in great demand for decorations and bouquet and marriage ceremonies. It takes around 10 to 15 days to completely freeze dry these flowers. As most of the flower growers in the region are women, floriculture has empowered many workers and the women folk have been able to profit from these new labor markets. The State Agricultural Management and Extension Training Institute Department of Agriculture, Government of Manipur, had conferred Robbie with the State Best Farmer Award in Horticulture for 2017 to 2018. With that, we have come to the end of this episode of Roving Report. Do connect with us through our Facebook page and follow us on Twitter at NEIndia underscore ANI. Like and subscribe Roving Report YouTube channel. And don't forget to press the bell icon to get the latest updates from the Northeast. I'm your host, Skyrim, signing off. Thank you for watching. Goodbye and take care.